Hey there, fellows. So today, just like we always do, we'll be experimenting. Let me just say something here. I'd like to thank our viewers for commenting on our videos. Someone came up with a neat suggestion. I reckon you can clearly see what's going on here. I've got myself three boxes full of batteries. Just a bunch of simple double A's. Of course, they're not the most primitive ones you can get. As in, they're a bit more expensive than the cheapest options out there. An alkaline or something, I forget how you call them. Anyway, here's what we have in mind. I've fabricated some casing, which I've already fitted some copper panels to. Here's the negative side, and that's the positive. And now I'm gonna start stacking 1,000 small batteries into this box. The point, of course, being to try to start this car. Using a bunch of double E's instead of a conventional car battery. All right, so I think I'll remove the hood for better visibility, so that you guys can see how we get everything connected and so on. As you can see, we've repainted this car and now it's blue. For those who haven't seen that, there's a video of the entire process on our second channel. So yeah, we're gonna try firing this car up. For the time being, since the box itself is ready for action, as in the plates are installed, not to mention that the batteries are unpacked, it's time to start assembling this makeshift battery. Let's do this. Okay, here's what we're looking at. As you can see, I've already stacked the first row, a few blank spaces in there, which I left in order to show you guys. So here's what's up. Each row consists of eight batteries, and on one, we'll wind up with a layer cake here. Anyway, so one layer is eight batteries wide and 12 batteries long. You can do the math yourselves. But it should mean that in the end we'll have a cake consisting of eight layers in total. So until I use up all the batteries, I'm just gonna keep on stacking. Hopefully I finish this before the morning. Whatever, let's just do this. 1000 double A's instead of a conventional car battery. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. I've been at this for quite a while now, and now all the batteries are finally stacked. We are looking pretty good. I fit them in there nice and tight. Here we have the positive, and this here is the negative. So what do we do next? The battery connectors have some long wires on them. So I'll remove the connectors from the wires. First off, I'm gonna have to drill through these plates. And then I'm just gonna mount the wires right here, so that I get a good connection. We obviously won't be able to get the thing right in there, into the stock mounting position, since it is considerably longer. But that's not a problem, since like I said, the wires themselves are quite long. Alright, time to drill, connect everything and start the car. Okay, so we've got this makeshift car battery in there. It's all wired up. We're all curious to find out whether the car will start. But that's only half of the story. There was a warning label on the packaging of those batteries, which said, do not recharge. As we all know, as soon as this car starts, the alternator will also start doing its thing. And that begs a certain question. Should we leave it to run or not? Well, let's just figure that out as we go. Let's do this. All right, so the experiment begins. What do we got here? 
ready to turn the key. All right. Everything seems to be working. Okay, let's see what you do. All right. Who said that you can't start a car using AA batteries? It's very much doable. And the alternator also seems to be working fine. We are looking good. This is fantastic. Okay, so our first try was successful. I reckon we should do it again. We'll keep trying until they completely run dry. So that we can use them for a TV remote or something. Okay, should we just keep this ball rolling or what? Alright, so here goes our second try. Did I take it out of gear? I really don't want to get into the cabin. Oh, I didn't even put it in gear. So this isn't your typical... What the hell? This isn't some imported car. It's a good old Lada. It just fires up without any issues. That was pretty great. That was our third start, right? Alright guys, there's one thing I need to tell you. Someone might assume that we've cheated and connected some other device to the car. Let me just fire this thing up, switch it off, and show you guys that we absolutely don't have anything in there. And that this pack of 1000 AA's is more than happy to start this car. Check this out. So the car is running. Without any hiccups. And now we just remove this box. And all the wiring, which leads to the alternator, the starter motor. You'll see everything in just a moment. Just so nobody starts complaining that this is all fake and whatnot. Oh man, this thing is heavy. Yeah, I did have a container down here. But that's just so that the battery pack doesn't fall through. As you can plainly see, it contains a few drill bits and some other stuff. It was there solely for support. Let's have a look, shall we? Here we have the ground wire. This wire was connected to the starter motor, the alternator and everything else, and there's nothing else down here. I'd say that this experiment was quite successful indeed. This makeshift car battery did a good job starting the car. It literally had zero problems. It started the motor with ease, and it was good for more than one start. Given the amount of batteries we have in there, with each of them producing 3, 4, 5 amps, multiply by 1000 batteries, you can do the math. We're talking a huge surplus of power. Despite this not even being an intermediate gear type starter motor. It's just your regular kind of unit which needs a lot of power. That said, we have more than enough here. But we're not done just yet. Now we're gonna try something different. We've actually seen this a few times on the internet, and we're keen to try it ourselves. Anyway, we'll fill you in as we go. Alright, so I've seen this done a bunch of times. I looked it up once out of curiosity. Anyway, they say that you can use a car battery to power an arc welding machine. Which is something I want to check out firsthand. <coughs> Given the fact that this makeshift car battery was easily able to start the car, that means we'll look into how easy it is for these batteries to generate enough current to heat up. This is actually the smallest electrode I have on me. So I guess we'll give it a try. I don't think it'll make much of a difference. I'm guessing there's not enough voltage for a 3 mil rod here, but... Whatever, we'll see where this goes. Some of you might want to turn away from your screens if the flickering is too much for you. Now who said a battery can power a welder? Yeah. Just as I suspected. The current is pretty strong, but we don't have enough voltage. There's not nearly enough. 
All right, so here's what we're looking at. This wasn't enough to power an arc welder. Since I was using a 3 millimeter electrode, there was plenty of current, but there wasn't enough voltage to get an arc going. What else have I got here? Oh, I've got some filler rod, which is 2 mil. It's for TIG welding stainless steel. Let's try melting this. I reckon this should be pretty easy, given the current which even made the 3 mil rod go up in smoke. And now we just connect it to the other side and see what happens. So, what's going to happen to the 2 mm stainless rod? You can already see it going red. It should turn white in just a moment and break right off. Since it doesn't go into an amorphous state, like aluminum, for example. Look at this. That's it? Maybe the batteries are dead. Well, at least they did a good job powering the starter motor. Then again, they did get this thing pretty warm, didn't they? Maybe we should try heating up the electrode. Yeah, let's try the electrode. There we go. We don't have enough voltage, that's why it's taking so long. Then again, the entire electrode did... There we are. Now that's... Right, so I guess... I reckon there's... Probably more than 160 amps in there. If this thing wasn't coated, it would have probably burned through to the core already. We got nothing else in here to burn. <laughs> I don't even know what else we can stick in here to show you guys. All right, so the coating is starting to boil. It should fall apart pretty soon. Just a little bit more. Well? Are the batteries getting hot? Nope, they're still cold. Then again, there's really no reason for them to get hot. There are so many in there that the current really isn't an issue. As you've just witnessed, the current in here is really strong. It was able to melt the electrode, plus that filler rod. We even tried doing some welding. Let me just disconnect these clamps and try throwing it in the car again. And take another crack at starting it. While I was putting everything away, another idea occurred to me. Why not use these welding cables to connect to the car right from this table? And start the car that way. We have to make it quit somehow, don't we? I mean, what the hell? It just keeps starting. So, here's the positive wire. Okay, positive wire, check. All right, let's try it out. <laughs> okay, so it starts even with this setup. Awesome! But you could hear that the starter motor hesitated ever so slightly. So from the looks of things, we've actually managed to drain the battery pack after all. All right, so today's experiment was truly a huge success. We didn't expect to see these AA batteries starting the car over and over again. While also managing to melt an electrode and some filler rod. And starting the car after that as well. It's got plenty of capacity, so yeah. This experiment was a tremendous success. Everything worked out beautifully. Anyway, watch our videos, subscribe, hit that like button, leave some comments and suggestions. Alright, see you guys!